Hi there, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson here. Um, following on from part one of this tutorial is part two of modelling the Eames Rocker fiberglass seat shell. Uh, so in this second section, we're going to look at modelling this rolled edge that runs around the perimeter of the chair. So to do that, we're going to take the surface that that we uh, made in the first tutorial and then we're going to trim it back back to this line that you can see on the minty green surface and then we'll construct uh, the rolled edge and thicken it okay um, now one thing I have done since the first tutorial is I added a uh, an extra cross curve if you did watch the first tutorial we, we remember we added a cross curve here um, I've just put another one in here just to, to get us a little bit closer to the uh, reference surface. Um, again, I'm not too concerned about matching things exactly. This is more about process than um, getting things bang on. Okay, so if we look at this from a right hand view, um, I'm going to trim the surface. Firstly, I'm going to trim the front half. Looks like there's a, a plain R section here or a line into a blend and then a line and then the back section we'll have to uh, trim from a separate projection from a different projection okay so I'm going to go into the right hand plane sketch um, just make sure I've got my mapping on and I'm going to draw a line the second line into wireframe um, it's close enough. Let's delete this reference geometry constraint in there. Okie dokie, I'm going to skip dimensioning it because um, it'll just take more time. Yeah. You should know how to dimension by now. <laughs> okay, um, as you can see that line ends there, I'm just going to put a little tail on it to make sure we cross the boundary of the surface so the trim will work. Okay. And instead of trimming the surface with this with the sketch, I'm going to extrude the sketch. Insert surface extrude and 350. And I'm going to put a curvature continuous fillet on the top. Change it to curvature continuous and I need to bring up my reference. Go body. Okay, um, make this bigger, 60. Okay. That will do, you could make it asymmetric, but you can go symmetric, oh, let's just make it asymmetric, okay. Um, so we're gonna make the top one shorter. Okay, that will do us. Which continuous okay now if I turn the zebra stripes on um, we can check that our blend there is curvature continuous I know the mesh resolution is a bit low but you can sort of see it's it's not coming into a sharp angle change across the boundary turn the zebra stripes off and now I will use the extrude as a trim tool and keep Go. Okay, now I'm going to have to trim the back section. Um, to do this, we've got to find a, a projection angle that that will allow us to uh, trim uh, as normal to the surface as possible. We don't want to go trimming it from this angle, for instance, because this this will be a very abrupt change here. So. So a situation like this, and we've got to trim it tangentially, so this has to be 90 
this 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 spine has to be normal to the uh, center line. So I think I will create a, a plane on an angle. I will create an axis. And then create a plane that is the right plane, say 45 degrees. And then if we go to that plane and look normal to it, once we rotate, and I think there we can see the trim pretty clearly. Okay, right on that plane, I'm just going to save. On that plane, we'll uh, add a sketch and insert a style spline. Um, Six. Okay. We want to make this horizontal, but because our planes rotated, we make it vertical. Um, over here, we want to just turn my reference off for a second, so we make sure we pick the right edge. Make those two tangent. Then bring up our. I'm just going to drag the uh, spline handles around until just sort of close ish. It'll do for us. It's cheap. Right, that's all right. And accept that. Now we want to use that sketch trim, trim surface, and we want to keep section. Okay. Oh. Now we start noticing how how much variation there is in my original surface. Anyway. That's cool. So here we are. Now you've got a surface that's ready to put the rolled edge on. Um, and mirror this over. Okay. So if you can imagine doing this with separate surface patches um, to try and get a smooth result could be a bit of a nightmare. Um, because I'd imagine you'd be building the base out of a patch, and then through the bum area, and then through the through the lumbar, uh, yeah, and then getting those to um, get continuity across them all or a good flow would be a bit of a pain. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to think about defining perimeter. So what I'm going to do is define this perimeter here. I'm not going to define if this looks like I've made like a full round or a full blend between the offset surfaces. So I'm going to insert face delete. Get rid of that. Okay. So I'll probably start by drawing the center line profile. Right plane, dust line, four points, so degree three curve. Now I'm going to make, we're going to add a curvature continuous constraint to the sketch. So um, you need be able to move this end around freely you need you need four points because these that's your tangent point there's your curvature continuous point uh which are controlled by the relationship back here uh so if we want to move this around we need to have that extra um wouldn't it okay 
Now I will dimension these because side works can get a bit crazy when you have a curvature continuous constraint in your sketch. Okay, that'll probably do us. Um, this end, as I said, is free. We're just gonna I'm just gonna iometer it. Um, a quick look at the curvature on that. Okay, so that's the top, ah, the bottom interline profile. And now again, right plane, we'll add one up the top. Four points, degree three curve, which means three of the points. You've got a position point, tangent point, curvature, that are all planed or controlled <laughs> by the um, curvature constraint here. And then the other point on the end is your free point to move around. Okay, so we'll select those two, curvature, and as you can see there, this point's moving because I'm moving that one, this one here, whoops, top one. Anyway, I shall dimension and that one, and I'll just drag this one to there and I'm just going to delete that. Um, okay, so that looks all right. Okay. So now to create this, um, Perimeter, I'll probably do a uh, project two sketches onto each other. So to do that, I'm going to create a plane that is normal to the right plane, but pivots between these two endpoints. So to do that, you select insert plane, click those two points, click the right hand plane, go OK, Let's drag this out a bit. Might just hide my profiles from the um, this tutorial. Okay. Now we want to insert a sketch on this plane. And we'll look at our reference. So it looks like maybe On there, not sure of the intent was here that this has to be straighter. Maybe we'll just we'll just make this up. Okay, and now a um, star spline. I want to go curved continuous here and tangent on this end, so that'll be. Two points of that end, and tangent and end this end. So make that coincident with that point, and it will touch because we've got the plane going through there. And at this end, because this is a line, we can just make all of those collinear, which means that is curvature continuous coming off that line. Okay. This one here will make horizontal, makes it normal to the center line. Again, I'm just doing this kind of um, roughly. I'm not going to try and get it bang on because this the seat shell looks like it actually arcs out there. Um, I'm just going to do it like this. So it's coming down straight and then into the spline. Okay, and now for the top, looks like we'll go around the corner here and it tucks in and reverses direction. So we did that with the spline, curvature continuous, you need one, two, three, that's the curvature. And I probably need a point here so I can pull it inwards to get this curve. And then I need two points here for tangency, I need my tangent point and my end point. Okay. Incident, go back to normal to plane. So that, that curve, what is it? Degree 5, yeah, cut. Uh, 
horizontal constraint and then these again because we're going matching these to a line so they can be collinear that makes it curvature continuous there without using a curvature constraint which means every, everything starts moving around by itself you don't need to use a curvature constraint to make curvature continuous to a line okay so we're probably going to have an issue here with not enough roll over the mm, might be alright curvature of this curvature graph of this spline could be Yeah, so you've got two inflections there with the curve changes direction but that's what's happening on the uh, shell, the imported shell from Rhino so okay, turn curvature off so I'm just going to save that so that's one sketch for our projection and now I'll probably probably make one on the right hand view Okay, so right plane sketch um, looks like it comes around to here into a straight line through a blend there into a line and then spline up here. So I will put in a line there. Line there and we'll connect those two lines here with a with a spline with a style spline so curvature continuous on each end so that means I need six points overall so one two three four five six okay because we're matching to a line on this end we can just make these collinear just gonna fix that and cheat. And on this end, a linear. Sometimes I make these just, just quickly. We'll make these ones equal length. The line between the CVs with a hull. Is it hull? I don't think SolidWorks calls it that anyway. Okay, so that's not going to give us the best curve because we need a bit more control. So that will do us there. And down here, I'm going to blend to the center line, end of the center line, the bottom profile. So we're coming off a line. We want to go curvature too. So one, two, three, and then just one point on the end. Right, so we're going to make this line, this line, and the line a linear. Juggle the um. I have to add in, add a um. Add another point in. I will go here. Right click. You can see the control vertex there. Make this line here at the bottom horizontal. That will do for that. Oh, whoops, I haven't done the top. Um, okay. So I wonder if I can just do this with one spline. Just for speed. Okay, so we'll need one, two, three. Three point here. And then going up to there. So again, collinear. Okay, Make that connection to the line curve to continuous. I don't think I'm going to get a very good result here, to be honest. Tight bit control vertex. Yeah, we'll 
below there, so. Hmm. This will look like if we just do it roughly, anyway. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn that off so we can't see how inaccurate we are, but anyway, insert curve, projected, sketch on sketch, go down to the bottom here, look at those two sketches, Did a big wobbly mess, uh, doesn't look too bad, looks can be deceiving though, okay, so what I did in our tutorial one, first section of this was uh, we had a, created a profile up here for the side of the seat shell and once I projected curve on curve or sketch on sketch, ended up with a curve and um, I I prefer using a having a 3D sketch as anything I'm referencing to because the curve can be a bit funny sometimes like finding points along it or referencing to it so I go insert, insert 3D sketch and then just pick back curve and then convert entities and that makes everything much more obvious okay. and then I'm going to hide the 3D sketch so ah the, the curve sorry okay Now the chances of being able to do this in one boundary surface are fairly slim, but we'll have a crack at it. So B for boundary. I'm going to pick the outer 3D sketch that we just made, and then I'm going to use Selection Manager to pick our way around here. Go OK. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, OK, Direction 2. Our Profiles. And then on open group one, which is the edge, we want to put a tangent constraint on it. And I can tell already it's 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 making all the uh, surface or the curvature change, like in the first first fifth of the uh, surface. Hmm, it's not pretty. Okay, scale. So I wonder. Let's see if we can go you know tangent influence up. That's filled it out of it. We'll just accept it and see what happens. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, the other thing we need to do. We haven't made these end sections normal to the center, normal to profile, normal to profile, and normal to profile. Which means, of course, when you mirror it, it should mirror over well with no. Um, if you do a deviation analysis, it should be all spot on down there. Okay. Kind of reluctant to put the zebra stripes on, but let's have a look. Yeah, so you can see a bit of bunching up here. Yeah, it kind of wobbles. It'll be our um, engine influence. It's right on the top. Wonder if it would benefit with one profile through here, maybe. Because it looks like it's getting a bit punched through here. The long game for this, the long solution, the tidy way to do it, slightly tidier, would be to go through and actually define each of these sections through here. So you create a plane through here, create a profile, create a plane through here. Well, let's just do these two. Okay, so I'm going to create a plane, two points, um, and then we'll pick third reference, we'll pick top, um, and then we're going to have to rotate that around. Okay. Got that, that profile. So insert a sketch there, and then you want you need to run a uh, insert or oh, tool, sorry, sketch tools intersection curve. Got an intersection curve and insert a style spline, and we'll need one, two, there's a curvature continuous on the scene, three points, and then a three point, and then there. 
and we we that's not a line that's a that's a spline so we'll have to use the equal curvature constraint and we'll have to dimension these so everything doesn't go wobbly okay and we've got 20 40 and i'm just going to turn on the curvature graph here the curvature And I'm going to dimension this last point in space. I'm going to put an angle and a length on it. So we've got you know, 55 and 15, say. So 20, 40, 15. Save that. And now I'll put another section up here through this point and point on our boundary and it doesn't look too bad so I might just put okay sketch I'm gonna go insert not insert I keep saying the wrong thing sorry so tools sketch tools intersection curve make that construction geometry Again, style spline, we need one, two, three for curvature, three point and end point. And we will add for curvature constraint and dimension. It's 20, 40, I um, can't remember that one, 15. And that, oh no, it won't be, be different because of the, um, in an angle. All depends on what you want happening along there. I might just go okay to that and then roll forward that boundary surface and have a look and see. My curve might not be full enough. I had a weird lump on it there. Okay, um, second curve here, like that. Okay. Now boundary, we're going to add those two into our boundary surface. So direction two, I'm going to pick those two, we go OK. Um, let's clean that up a bit. Obviously my curve here is way too flat, naturally wants to go up higher there. Oh I'm not, I haven't even used it. done something silly okay it hasn't accepted that curve what's that hmm accepted that Like this bottom one though. See if we can add this curve in now. Error. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Um, I'm just going to quickly um, knit these together and then offset them select other select surface body 5 moles backwards
Doesn't like that. No, it does. No, it doesn't. Oh gosh. No, let's not do that. Curvature. So this is the problem. I've cheated a bit. I haven't um added sections everywhere, just for just speeding up the uh, process of this tutorial. <laughs> Five points. And then quickly we'll add the uh, curvature. Here's point for our exterior. Turn off our other curves. Ah, of course, wrong one. That one. Okay. And some dimensions on our spline points. Okay, wait a little bit. Build up. Okay. So our boundary surface is doing some funky stuff up there because there's no nothing to control it. Oh, an error. Like sometimes SolidWorks, if you keep adding. If you keep adding um, sections to a um, or sketches to a direction, it will pull up an error, even though there is no error if you delete the um, those sections and then and repick them. Oh, <laughs> bit too soon. All right, wants me to do the whole lot. Go one. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, and remembering, we have to make our centerline ones normal to profile. And go okay. Oops, turn the curves off. Um, okay, it looks a bit better up there. Uh, nut that together. Now offset, select other surface body. I see that offset much quicker there because they didn't have all this wacky curvature going on. Okay, let's try it with the loft. So selection manager, selection. Okay, and then selection manager again for the second set. Okay. Okay, loft's given us a flat there. Set that. Gonna nut the front and back together. Got that edge. Um, we can see we can try and put a uh, pull. Round on it. First set, you can set, and will it work? Yes, okay. So I put a full round between our front and back faces. 
Okay, full round and then insert mirror. What is the mirror? Right hand plane and knit. Okay, so you have a fairly quick, that was a condensed, very condensed um, um, tutorial into making a fairly complex form um, using a, an overbuilt surface, trimming back and then adding the rolled edge. Uh, seriously, if you wanted a four hour tutorial, I would have done this and added each section in. Um, wherever there's a break in tangency, you know, where it changes from a line to a blend line um, and spent much more time on tweaking that. But um, I think generally you can, you get the idea of sort of technique that that's involved that might allow you to um, produce chairs, chair seat shells uh, of a fairly fluid form. Anyway, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Andrew Jackson, OJ Design Studio. Bye.